Hello, and welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Chess to you one page at a time, one day at a time. Put it up on the YouTube for everyone to enjoy. This is page 431. Here we go. Amid witheringly slight and scattered applause, and would melt into the crowd soon after and dematerialize back to wherever he lived and trained and target practiced, Clipperton by this time must have a whole mantle plus bookcase, bookcases worth of tall USTA trophies. Each USTA trophy a marble plastic base with a tall metal boy on top arched in mid-serve, looking rather like a wedding cake groom with a very good outside slider. Clipperton must just have must have been just broke out in brass and plastic, but he had no official ranking whatsoever, since his Glock 9mm and public intentions were instantly legendary. He was regarded by the USTA as never having had a legitimate victory, or even a legit match, in a sanctioned play. People on the Junior Tour sometimes ask Tiny Mario if that's why Eric Clipperton always seemed so terrifically glum and withdrawn and made such a big deal out of materializing and dematerializing in tournaments that the very tactic that let him win in the first place kept the wins and in a way Clipperton himself from being treated as real. All this until the erection of o Onan and the inception in Clipperton's 18th summer of subsidized time in the adverted year of the Whopper when the USTA became the ONATA, Onenta and some Mexican systems analyst who barely spoke English and had never once fondled a ball and knew from exactly zilch except for crunching raw results data, this guy stepped in as manager, manager of the Onenta, Onenta computer and ranking center in Forest Lawn, New, New York, and didn't know enough to treat, not to treat Clipperton's string of six major junior tournament championships that spring as sanctioned and real. And then when the first bi-weekly issue of the trilingual North American Junior Tennis that's replaced American Junior Tennis comes out, there's one E.R. Clipperton, hometown Ind, ranked number one in boys continental in 18 and unders, and competitive eyebrows ascend at all latitudes, and everyone but at ETA, from shit on down, is highly amused. And some of them wonder whether now maybe, maybe now Eric Clipperton We'll put down his psychic curious and take his unarmed competitive chances with the rest of them now that he's got what he's surely been burning over and holding himself hostage for all along a real and sanctioned number one and the continental junior clay courts are coming up the following week in indianapolis indiana and little michael pemulus of alston <clears throat> takes his power book and odd software and makes a killing on Vig in the frenzy of locker room wagering over whether Clipperton will even bother to materialize at Indy. Now that he's extorted himself to the sanctioned top, he must have craved so terribly. Or whether he'll retire from the tour now and lie around masturbating over the Glock in one hand and the latest issue of NAJT in the other, footnote 175. And so everyone's taken aback when Eric Clipperton, of all people, suddenly appears at the ETA front gates portcullis on a rainy, warm, late a.m., two days before the clays, wearing a frayed, flap-frayed trench-type coat and toe-abraded sneakers and a five-day growth of arm-pity adolescent beard, but without... <clears throat> all right. That was page 431 of Infinite Jeff. Have a good night.